Welcome to today's broadcast with Pastor Ruben Villarreal. If you're looking for something spiritual that has power, no competition, no discussion, you have the revelation that you need. The mystery has been revealed to you. And now, that Jesus be blessed Christ. by the Word of God. As, you, as I've mentioned in the past, I'm not very long-winded. You know, I, um, I, I'm, uh, I don't know, sometimes I've even uh, thought that I, have, I may have a little bit of ADHD, you know. So I have to, like, hit right there and there because, you know, my, even my attention span is about maybe 20 minutes or so, and then I go off on a, so I got to try to say my points within 20, 30 minutes. If not, I'm going to be talking about something else, okay? So I'm not very long when I try to stay focused, and I think a lot of you are going to appreciate that too, right? You're like, thank you, you know? Because some, some people take two hours to say three things, right? And uh, I just like, just give me what I need because I got to wake up at 5.30 in the morning tomorrow, and I'll apply that to my life, you know, for the rest of the week. Amen? Amen. Yes, you know what I'm talking about, those of you that have to wake up early in the morning, right? We come here, Lord, touch me. Touch us up. Give me your word. I got that word. I'm ready for tomorrow. You know, I love the mid-services, the midweek services, because it's like an injection of power, you know? Sometimes you just need that extra charge, and that's the beauty about coming to church midweek, right? Because sometimes you, if you don't come to church midweek and you just show up on Sunday, boy, you're beaten up. I mean, you're dried up. You're so drained because life is tough, guys. I don't know if you know, but life is tough. The Bible even tells us many are the afflictions of the just, and, 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 and daily, we're, we're, we're bombarded daily, daily. But you know what? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for this place of prayer. Thank God for his word that, man, we can gather. Thank God for this country where we have the freedom to gather in this place. Yes. And worship and receive from the Lord Jesus. Amen. So my title today is uh, Rise and Be Healed. Rise and be healed. You know, last week I shared with you all uh, from the letter of James, right? And we spoke about James, and, and the title of, the, of that message was Only God Heals. You know, the doctors can do all they can. They, they can do all they can, and thank God for doctors, amen? But you know who does the healing process? The, the doctor will put, try to put you together again. You know, Humpty Dumpty fell off a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. You know, all the king's horses, all the king's men, they try to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But I tell you what, only one person can keep Humpty Dumpty all together, and that's Jesus, right? And so uh, thank God for, for the medical field and all they do in every area, for the psychologists, for the, psych uh, uh, the, yeah, the psychologists, the psych uh, psych psychiatrist as well, and, you know, the, uh, all those things, and the, and the medicine, the pharmacist, and all that, but in the end, the source of our healing, we know, is from Jesus, amen? And so, it's interesting, because not only do you receive this word, but I received this word as well, as in preparation for this evening. I didn't really know that I was going to share. I just get a text message close to midnight. Can you help me tomorrow? Wow, at least give me 24 hours or something. Okay, sure. And uh, so, uh, but like I said, I'm reading throughout the week. I'm studying for my own. I have my own devotions in the morning. And it's funny because last week when I shared with you, I shared out of the letter of the epistle of James, right? Uh, uh, Jesus' brother. And we looked at chapter 5 where uh, he said, if there are, are any sick among you, right, call for the elders to pray for you. But today we're going to look at another book that starts with the letter J, and it's John. And we're also going to look at chapter 5. Just like last week, we looked at James chapter 5. Today we're looking at John chapter 5. So I want to invite you to John chapter 5. <coughs> John chapter 5. It's a story in the Bible that is a very encouraging story, 
a story that maybe many of you have heard and uh, maybe others have not. It might be something new. You maybe never even noticed it in the Bible, but it's in James. Remember, the New Testament begins with the first book of Matthew, and then it goes, the second book is Mark, the third book is Luke, right? And then that fourth book is John. Whenever I am speaking, and I'll give you time to find John, chapter 5, whenever I'm sharing with someone about Jesus and and they say, you know what, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. And we, we pray, and, and they, they accept, and, and they, 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 they make Jesus Lord of their life, right? And uh, when they do that, they're like, uh, okay, so what do I do, you know, with the Bible? I've got a Bible, but where do I start? Do I start in the very first book? Where do I start? And I always tell them, start with John. Start with the gospel according to John. Because that gospel right there, it, it, it's all, John was there to share about Jesus. And what, in the whole purpose at the end at, of that gospel, he says, and these things were written so that ye shall believe. And so I always tell him, start with John. It's easy to understand. And because at the very end, it says, and these things were written so that you should believe. And so that way it can encourage your faith, strengthen your faith. You know, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you come today a little drained, a little down, a little discouraged, the word that you're going to hear this evening is going to bring faith and strengthen your, the faith that you have as well. And I pray with all my heart that when you leave here, you're going to leave feeling like the Incredible Hulk. Saying, man, come on, Satan, I'm ready. Glory to God. Amen. So, amen. To God be the glory. Yes. So, John chapter 5, we're going to read a few verses, verses 1 through uh, 8. Okay. Are we there yet? John chapter 5, I've given you. And I, I want to ask you as well that every time you come to church, you know, bring your Bible. I know everything's on cell phone nowadays and stuff, and there's, that's fine. But if you see someone that has a Bible and they just can't find that scripture, hey, be a good Christian. Get up. Don't be lazy and just be staring. Get up. It doesn't matter if the TV camera's on. It doesn't matter. Go help the person next to you. And they'll be forever grateful that you showed them the truth. Amen. To this day, I still have one of the people here that's been over maybe 30 years. Danny, and some of you guys know Danny. He's one of the ushers here, one of the, yeah, he, he, he tells me my first time to church. Yeah, that was 30 years ago. He goes, you were the one. I was trying to find the book, and you just came and sat next to me, and you helped me find a chapter in the Bible. That was over 30 years ago, and he's still here at the church. So you just never know who you're going to help. You don't know if you're going to help the next Billy Graham. You don't know the next Catherine Comey, the next Amy Simple McPherson. So you know, get up, be a good Christian, and help those that you see that are hungry for the word. Amen? Let's read John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Amen? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, uh, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. You know, he would move the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made, what? Whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lying, and he knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Would thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. 
Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Lord bless his word. Amen? I said the Lord bless his word. Amen. If we look here in verse 1, we look at the condition of this man. And right away, right away we see here when it's talking about this man, it says that this man uh, was uh, impotent. This man was impotent. The Bible even says that he uh, had an infirmity. You know, the word impotent means he was without power. He was uh, without strength, without vigor. He was uh, uh, powerless. He was in need. And uh, here he is. He was in need of a healing. And we see him there laying and lying down, the Bible tells us, under one of those porches. There were five porches, right? And under one of those porches, the man was lying down. The Bible tells us that what kind of people were there? Were, were there strong, healthy people at this pool? No, they were sick, right? They were in bad shape. It said that some were blind. You know, they could walk, but they were blind. They could hear, but they were blind. Some were halt. Well, what is halt? A halt in Spanish, it says cocos. Cocos, and that means that they had a problem uh, with walking as well, you know. Uh, maybe they walked with a limp, but at least they could walk. Yeah, you know. So sometimes we look at our problems and situations, and uh, but the, there was an old hymn in the past that said, count your blessings, you know. Yeah. Yes, you walk with a limp, but here's a man that hasn't walked in 38 years, yeah. And so, what else was there? There were people there that uh, were withered. There probably uh, something in their, uh, the Bible says in Spanish, it says paralíticos. They were paralyzed, par para, um, what's the word, uh, paraplegic, right? Paraplegic as well, which in this case would be the man that we're talking about, the impotent man. Uh, we don't know his age. We just know that he's been there how many years? Man, that's a long time, isn't it? That's a long time. And the word tells us that at a certain season, an angel would come down, trouble the water, you know, move the water around, just trouble the water, and whoever was the first person to step in that water after the angel come down and trouble it, they would made whole in that instant. But the problem was that this man couldn't walk. And so the blind could at least, you know, they, they, they'd go all crazy trying to look for the pool and, uh, and just point me in the right direction. And they'd run and splash in and they would beat him. Yeah. Maybe the other ones that were limping, you know, they're, uh, they're limping, dragging that leg or whatever, but they could see as well and they'd get in that pool and they would beat him to the miracle. Now, sometimes in church, we come to church and we sit here and service after service after service, and we witness people receiving their miracles. Yeah. Man, we see people healed of all kinds of stuff in this church. It's awesome. We see big miracles, too. We see cancer healed in this church. Yeah. We've seen people uh, that, that I've gone with dad, where we've uh, prayed for people that are on their dying bed. And lo and behold, a week later, they're in church. Yeah. And dad actually prays for them, and he's praying that the Lord receive them, and the Lord this. And then in the end, he says, you know, but just in case, if it's not his time, we rebuke death, and Lord, do your will in him. And they're here the next week. And then a month later, dad gets a call. Well, he's back on his deathbed. And we go over there to the hospital, and dad prays again, Lord, 
you know, they're about to pull the plug. We gave him to you. He's in your hands. And a month later, he's in the church back there jumping and dancing. And then again and again and again, you know, and people begin to question, you know, why is God doing a work there? And, and God sees my situation, my situation with my kids. God sees my situation with my marriage. God, I'm sure God sees the situation with my body. I'm sure God situ sees the situation with my mind. I'm sure God si sees the situation with my household or at my job. My, with my coworkers, well, I see uh, God sees the situation with my different relationships and my friendships, right, or uh, family relationships with my family and stuff. And he goes, and why isn't he working there? I see everybody else getting their miracle, everybody else getting their touch, but where's mine, Lord? You know? And that comes in, and, you know, that's natural because, you know, while we're in this body, this body has... Uh, emotions and you know we're we're, in, we're emotional beings amen amen you know i remember years ago probably about 15 16 years ago when i was the principal of the christian school here this lady comes in one day and says uh she's like man you know i see you playing the piano I see you singing, and I see all these people dancing in the front, and all these kids running around. And man, I just I want to do that. And I and then I see my family members; they're just running back and forth, running back and forth. And I know that's God in them because they're not like that. How, what made them? The, and I'm, I I ask God, move me too. I need to feel that. I, I need to feel that. But it doesn't happen, Brother Robert. You know. And many times in church, you ask God, why aren't you moving in my life? Man, I've been suffering with this already five years. I've had this deal 10 years. I've been carrying this cross now 20 years, 30 years. And where is my healing at? Where is this? And Jesus is saying to you this evening, rise. Rise. Yeah and be healed but here's the deal have you ever seen where they they're looking for diamonds man looking i used to watch this show on the discovery channel when they would like be digging for gold or digging for man for the diamond you don't just find a diamond you you gotta hammer your way drill your way put expo boom explode stuff and you keep 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 you keep nailing away till you find that diamond way down deep and sometimes that's what happens to us in the church our hearts harden our hearts harden and we become discouraged just like this man did and the bible tells us you know, in verse 5, that this man had been there with this infirmity 38 years. And Jesus comes, just like the hymn I sang earlier. When Jesus comes, he arrives there to this scene, just like the Spirit of Jesus is here this evening. Amen. Those that said amen and hallelujah, they understand who's here. Those that didn't, maybe you're still going through that situation. And you're like, oh, I, I need this. Or what, what, where are you taking me with this? Well, I'm trying to get, I'm building your faith. I'm building that faith. I'm telling you, I know where you are. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you saying, He knows your situation right now. He knows where you're at. He knows the need that you have, and he is in front of you. His spirit is in front of you. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus arrives, he knew out of that great multitude of people, because the Bible tells us in verse 3 that there was a great multitude of impotent folk, a great multitude, a great multitude. Five large porches around this pool and this of Bethesda. Bethesda actually meaning house of mercy. 
Just like this house, house of prayer, this is a house of mercy. And many of us, we come with different needs. And at that place and at that moment, there was a great multitude of needs. But Jesus showed up with one person in mind in this occasion. And it was this man. And the Bible tells us right away in verse 6, when Jesus saw him. Just like this evening, when Jesus sees you, you should say amen. I said, when Jesus sees you, he's seeing you right now. He's seeing that you're not at home watching Netflix. He's seeing you that you're not on your phone, seeing who's on Snapchat or who's on Facebook or Instagram. How many likes did I get this evening? Or he, He's watching you, and he's like, that's, that, that's what I'm proud of. That, that's what I want to see. I want to see your persistence. Just like that man, 38 years. You know, after 38 years in a place, you know, if you're sick, if you're ill, if you're, you know, after 38 years, yeah, maybe the first year, first two years, you might have friends come and visit you. And, hey, I know when I broke my ankle and stuff, man, my friends, they visit me, they call me. Hey, Robert, how are you doing? How's your ankle? Oh, we miss you. We, we, you know, we go and run, and we think about you every time we go run and how you make us laugh in those long runs and how you play pranks on us. Man, we miss you out there. We just miss your smile and all this stuff. Oh, thank you. But you know what? After maybe six months, you know, it's like they forgot about me. I'm not heartbroken because I see them again, you know, but... Just in six months, no more, hey, Robert, where are you at? They knew where I was at, at home with my foot up and icing, you know? They're like, hey, that. And this man, 38 years, they knew where he was at. He was at the pool of Bethesda, right? He's just sitting there waiting, and every time, and guess what? I'm pretty sure the family members and friends, they got... We know where he's at. He's still there. I drive by there all the time. I walk by there all the time. I, you know, I'm, uh, I, he's, he's over there, but they don't go and say hi. Yeah. And sometimes you may feel like that in life, that you're going through this hard time, and all those so-called friends that, that they were there, and, oh, man, we're going to go the, here tonight, and, oh, we'll bring the fajitas, and we're going to go here, and, and, oh, yeah, man, we're going to have this get-together and that get Where are they at now that we're in need but Jesus is here, and Jesus is reminding you this evening that he's in that situation. He's walked into your life. He's made an intervention. He's here tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. And someone's going to rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so he arrives, and he sees this man, and he's, he knew Jesus knew because, you know what? He, yes, Jesus was all man, but he was all God. Yes, and God is uh, omniscient. And, uh, 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 and, 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 and he's, uh, the Bible mean, that, uh, omniscient means that he's all knowing. He, he knows it all. And he knows everything about me. He knows how many hairs fell in the sink this morning while I was combing my hair. See, I only comb my hair once a day these days because, you know, I can't put too much pressure. I scared a boy yesterday. Uh, I was, I was, they, they were testing, and I was monitoring tests. And, you know, today, uh, you know, after all that business was over, and, you know, I see him walking, and I was like, man, I go up to him. This was over. It was like after school, I go up to him. I was like, man. And he was like, what, what, Mr. Villarreal, what? I go, ooh. You know, there's a saying that we say in Spanish, and he's like, what is it? I go, como te veo, me vi, y como me ves, te verás. Somebody's probably asking, what, 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 that, what is he talking about? And the, the saying in Spanish, in English, translating loosely, it says, uh, the way I see you is the way I used to look. I used to see myself. And the way you see me now is the way you're going to see yourself. And he said, oh, no way, man. 
I'm not, I'm going to work out. I'm not going to have a big old belly like you, Mr. Villarreal. And I go, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the hair. And I was like, he's like, what? I go, oh, yeah, when you're taking that little nap during that test, you know, I saw the, that's how I started with those two little spots right there on the head. And, you know, I saw that thin hair. Yeah, that's how, mm -hmm. no way, no way. After that, they were saying, oh, man. Yeah, anyway, they were just messing with him. But, you know, I, 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 I say these things because the Bible tells me that God knows. He knows how many hairs are on my head. That's how well he knows. He knows everything. He knows my past. He knows my present. And more importantly, he knows what lies ahead in the future. Glory to God. He has a plan for our lives. Amen. And so this impotent man's been there 38 years with this cross. You know, he has not been able to progress at all. And every time he even makes an attempt to move forward, someone else beats him to the punch. That's how it is. Sometimes that happens on the job. Man, you're like so, you, you hear, oh, man, there's going to be a room for a promotion. And you prepare yourself. And you've been preparing yourself, and, and you prepare yourself daily and daily. You're preparing yourself for that moment. And when that moment comes, and you're, like, so excited because, you know, you even got word that, that so-and-so is impressed with your work and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, someone comes from out of nowhere and passes you up. Just like the cyclist that they showed one day in France. He's cycling He's in first place. Man, he's, he's just getting after it. And right before he crosses the finish line, he raises his hand like that. And when he's raising, he's not using his hands anymore. And another cyclist, zoop, passes by right at the last second and gets it. Yeah. And so in life, just like this man, he's about to make progress when another person jumps in the pool before him and gets the healing. But Jesus knew. Jesus knew his case. The Bible even says, when Jesus saw him lie, in verse 6, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, in that case, he went up to him. You know, people were looking like, who's this man? And he's, he's walking, and he walks right up to this man. And he looks at him, and he says, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? And the guy looks at him, and you know, like I said, your heart can become hardened after so many years of you not, everybody else getting a touch from the Lord, and you haven't. And he looks in discouragement, and he begins, instead of saying, instead of answering, yes, Lord, I want to be healed, he tells God, well, Every time I, Jesus didn't even ask him that. Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made whole? And he says, well, every time I, let me tell you uh, my situation here. Every time I try to make it to the pool, somebody else beats me. After that, after that angel comes and troubles the water, somebody else beats me to the pool. And Jesus looks at him and says, just get up. You know, rise up. Take up your bed and start walking. You know, Jesus didn't ask him, you know, hey, what, what's been the problem? What, 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 what's been stopping you from receiving your miracle? Jesus, Jesus knew everything. Jesus knew all of that. Just like you this evening, you come here and God, Jesus is saying to you, you know, rise and be healed. You know, some of you probably went through some bad breakup and you're like so down and depressed and you just haven't been able to move on. And yet the other person has moved on. And you just keep replaying, replaying, replaying that scenario. Or maybe you were betrayed by a family member, or you were betrayed by a good friend, or you were just betrayed. And you just keep replaying, this, uh, re betrayed by 
co-workers or good friends, and you just keep replaying and replaying and replaying and replaying. And the Lord's saying, hey, do you want to be healed? And you're like, well, let me tell you what happened to me, Jesus. Back in 1984, I was just starting out. You know, Jesus is like, you know, do you want to be healed? Well, let me tell you. You know, everybody in the church is being prospered, and they all have this and that. And, man, I still have the same old car. What does that have to do with anything? And Jesus comes into your situation and says, do you want to be made whole? Do you want your, your, your marriage to be whole? Do you, want, you know, do, do, do you want peace of mind? Do you want peace in your heart? Do you want a good night's rest? Do, do you want to prosper in your walk? And you're still like, well, let me tell you. That's not going to cut it. He's saying, leave that stuff behind. It's time for us to rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I know because it says, will thou be made whole? Somebody can easily say, well, that doesn't apply to me, Brother Robert, because physically I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I walk, I, I work out, I do this, I do that. Yeah. You can be like that. You can be strong as Tarzan and still have a broken heart. You can be as strong as Tarzan and still, you know, not get a good night's rest. I used to listen to this man years ago speak. He's already gone with the Lord. And uh, he used to say, you know what? You can have a big old mansion, but it doesn't mean you have a home. You could have a huge bed, a big old bed, but doesn't mean you have a good night's rest. Yeah. You can have, man, the, an, the nicest shoes, the nicest, uh, the latest shoes, the trendiest shoes, but doesn't mean that in life you're getting anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bible, God's word, is asking us a question this evening. He says, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be complete? Because sometimes in life when we self-reflect, we say, man, there's something missing. You know, I, I feel unbalanced. I remember my favorite movie, my, my, my all-time favorite movie. You guys never even heard of this. was way before y'all were born. I was 12 years old. It was called Karate Kid. Y'all don't know anything about that. Mr. Miyagi and Daniel San and wax on, wax off. Y'all don't know anything about Karate Kid. But man, that poor guy, he wanted to learn how to fight, you know. And Mr. Miyagi was like, no, you're going to learn balance. No, but I want to throw, you're going to learn balance. And he had him doing all these drills and all these drills to gain balance. Go out into Galveston and stand like this and kick the waves with one foot and he would kick the waves and 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 Mr. Miyagi was over there on a on a post on a light post or a cut off post and he was doing some kick I can't do it I don't want to rip my pants or anything but uh, anyway so he would do it and he would land on the post it was called the crane and he was imitating them birds the crane balance and then he started, as he would mentor Daniel San, Daniel San started to get it, and he was like, man, balance. Balance not only physically, but balance in my whole life, and balance even in me. And I remember one time he, was, he got beat up really bad, and, and Mr. Miyagi said, man, you made it this far in the tournament. You have nothing else to prove, Daniel San. And he goes, no, if you don't do your little and magic and put it on me and, and get me back out there, Mr. Miyagi. I won't have balance in my life. And some of you came here tonight because you're hoping for a touch of the Lord so you can have balance tonight, glory to God. Because you need balance. You don't want to show up to work unbalanced, like, whoa, 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 and you just go wherever the wind blows. You need to have balance. 
you need to know where you stand. And we stand on the word, the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he asked me this question. He asks all of us this question. Will thou be made whole? And let our response in unison be, yes, glory to God. I want to be whole, made whole, yes. The Bible tells us that Jesus looks at past the man's excuses, past everything, and just at the end says, let's get to the point. Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And if you get anything from this message, even verse 9 begins the first two letters, and immediately the man was made whole. The moment you decide enough's enough. Enough with the pity party. Yeah. Enough with the victim mentality. Enough with the, oh man, oh, everybody's being prospered. Everybody's getting their healing. Oh me, oh poor little me. Nobody calls me. Oh, and I'm the one. I'm the one. And maybe you are the one. Maybe you were the victim. Maybe you were the innocent one. You know, maybe, yes, they did betray you, without a doubt. But Jesus tells you tonight, it's time to rise. And you should get that word and immediately start walking forward. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Yeah. Because life is hard, guys. Life is definitely hard. And it's going to throw some tough punches. Maybe right now you're coasting. Yeah. But if, let me tell you, those waters will become choppy. And you better have a good anchor. Yeah. And Jesus is the anchor of our soul. Yeah. And you better have that anchor and you better throw it deep and hope that it catches on. And Jesus, if you have Jesus, Lord of your life, it's going to catch on. And when that, those times come, and guess what? Yeah, the, the, the betrayal may happen. Or guess what? Something may happen. Yeah, you may fall victim to things. Or that. And yes, you can have your time of grief. Yes, that's normal, that we are humans. Nobody's Superman here. Yes, you can have your time of grief. Yes, you can have your, yeah, you, you know, you can be sad for that moment. But I love what the Word of God says in Micaiah's. You know, he's down on the ground, and he's looking up, and he sees the enemy laughing at him. And he looks up, and he says, oh, my enemy, you may be laughing right now. You may have knocked me down seven times, but the Lord is going to lift me up on the eighth time. And maybe you've been already knocked down a few times. But Jesus is lifting you up this evening. And he says, it's time to rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Yes. And I close with this. Many times, it's not so much a healing of the body that a person needs but it's a healing of their soul. It's a healing of their spirit. <clears throat> and how does that happen, Brother Villarreal? Well, the Bible tells us that if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if we put our trust in what he did on the cross for us, that he died for us, that he was buried for us, that he rose again for us, that he ascended into heaven for us, that he sent his Holy Spirit for us, and that one day he will come back again for us. And in, during that time that he comes back, that I receive his Holy Spirit and I say, Jesus, it's this simple. I want you to be Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. 
and become Lord of my life. He doesn't promise for an easy life, but he does promise to always be there by your side. Oh, he promises to be there by your side. Let us bow our heads this evening. Everyone, eyes closed, heads bowed. And I want to ask you, with your heads bowed, have you made Jesus Lord of your life? I mean, do you recollect a moment in your life that, where you said, God, I need you in my life. I, I just flat out need you. I need you to forgive my sins. I need you to come into my heart. I need you to change me. I need you to become the boss, the Lord, the master of my life. If you've never done that before and you're here this evening, but you'd like to make Jesus Lord of your life, I want to ask you to raise your hand. Just raise your hand if, if you're here this evening and you'd like to make Jesus Lord of your life. You know, you know, very well may be that Many have already, I see too. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anyone else that would like to make Jesus Lord of their life? Hmm? God bless you. I see you, brother. I'm going to ask those that uh, raise your hand for you to come forward, and I like to pray with you. I like to pray with you. And, uh, and we're all going to be singing and worshiping and thanking the Lord as well for our healing, for our needs. And I'd like to pray for those that raise their hand up here in the front as well, and uh, let's just worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Pueblos Church with Pastor Ruben Villarreal. If this broadcast has been a blessing to your life, please write to us at 1600 Pasadena Boulevard, Pasadena, Texas, 77502. Visit our website at www.pueblosChurch.org or call us at 713 920 1840.